Yes, we shall begin now. Welcome to Test Reading Club. Uh, today, uh, we'll be reading Meena Kandasamy's poems, some of her select poems. Uh, she is an Indian novelist, poet, activist, and translator. Um, she can be considered to be one of the um, main uh, faces of uh, Indian scene today. Uh, and she is she is the first woman Dalit woman to write uh, in English. So we'll be reading her poems. So first is Jocelyn reading Celestial Celebrities. Over to you, Jocelyn. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, go um, ahead. Um, celestial celebrity. Because um, they had a reputation for being wild and unrestrained and undiscriminate when they came to men. Because they never cared who left sediment inside them. Because they looked forward to going down when opportunity presented itself. Because they went dry when it got muddy and unpleasant. Because they froze to frigidity in their beds. When they were in unlucky hands of those who had fallen for fallen out of favor. Because they were um, rapid in youth. Because they mellowed and become maternal when they met their match because they followed the jugged moody course they choose for themselves because they loved erosion and erase because they threw trams and rigged wars because they lacked secrets and loud cat fights because they held the magic key to the corridor of power because uh, they were fond of running, fond of running off and running away. The river here bear the names of fallen women exiled to earth when they when the heaven found them too bloody hot to handle. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, ma'am. Anjali. Anjali will be reading Dead Women Walking. Dead woman walking. I am a dead woman walking asylum corridors with flattering step, with felt hair, flying hair, with hollow cheeks that offset bulging eyes, mm -hmm. with wells of my wrists, with creasing skin, with scissors of speech and song, with a single story between my sobbing pendulous breaths. Once I was a wife, beautiful, married to a merchant, shifty-eyed, living the life until he was lost in listless doubt of how what I gave him was more delicious than whatever, whatever had been given to me. His mathematics could never explain the magic of my multiplying love. This miracle, like materializing mangoes out of thin air, like dishing out what was never there. This discrepancy drove him away, a new job in another city. He hitched himself to a fresh and formless wife, of course, as all women do. I found out. I, I wept in pain. I wailed. I walked on my head. I went to God. I sang in place of dancing dervishes. I made music for this word to devour on some dejected day. I shared my beauty. I sacrificed my six senses. Some some call me mad, some call me mother, but all of them led me here.
to this land of the living dead. Thank you, Anjali. Uh, next is Khalid, reading Facing the Music. Hello, I will be, my name is Khalid and I will be reading Facing the Music. Your love was lynched for one of those readily available reasons. Too weak for suicide, too meek for murder. You live post-traumatically and poetically. You live as if he has never died. Shell shocked, spellbound, your third eye, clamped shut to keep the nightmare away. Your blood bears the salt of the withheld tears. Never do you mention that your man, so alive even when being set alight, was humbled into a handful of ash and defend bone. You turn deaf to face this faulty music. You sacrifice all sleep. To live this fragile dream. You have sworn to never let him wander out of sight. You hold him captive in your shattered and wavering world, and he, like a flame, ceaselessly flickers. So your eyes do dance, and your moon glow in his ghostly presence makes poet sing of how, once upon a time, beauty basked in the light of her undying love. Thank you. Thank you, Kalib. Next is Deepsa. She'll be reading Lady Justice. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Deepsa and I'll read Lady Justice. You are sad and you start out sluggishly, shedding your gypsy skirts and learning to dress up in gold and Valentino gowns. You're playing patience to pass the time and you believe every feud has to die out when the fighters die. You wait for that. You later learn it does not work this way. Sitting still in songless court, you watch backlogs and bribes and middlemen grow. You are unfazed by all the hard work that sob stories demand. And so you dictate your judgments by picking from a tarot deck. You give the 10 of swords to the woman paraded naked and to the gang rape girl, self-defeating. Dangerous if they ever won. The five of pentacles to a laborer duped of a lifetime savings. And that old trader who wears his losses like a brass talisman. Finally, you hand out the three of swords for a hideous corpus from a maudlin ex-king, looking for his kidnapped princess bride. Your courtroom turns into an ominous circus. Two shows every day, Entry free. As the high priestess, you let hope elope with justice. The rebellious righteous unite against you. You are handed a hanged man and bathed in bullets. Your sinner's body is cast in stone. And to make sure that you never turn blind or bored or fall asleep, each plaintiff applies a paste of blood red chilies on your open eyes. Thank you. Thank you, Deepsa. Next is Pratima. She'll be reading Mrs. Sunshine. I am Pratima Shri. I am going to read Mrs. Sunshine. Mrs. Sunshine. She left him without warning. She left him because she didn't fancy the way he flaunted his fire, his fist, and his million blistering fingers that were always in heat. So she left him with her shadow as acting spouse for keeping house. He went wild. He went looking for his absconding angel of tears and caustic tongue, his angel of bleeding bare bones, his angel of monthly mood swings. He went looking out, he went looking over salt seas that shunned his shine over cities with skyscrapers that stared into his eyes and over obscure lands that 
chose to look away. Love sick, he lost his starry temper, his high temperature, his feverish fondness for flames and furnaces, and he became a man of moderation. Running behind the women on the run, he became a master of masquerade. He turned romantic. He longed for the soiled scents of rain, for the reposeful shade of trees, for mist that hung heavy like his heart. He squandered his insufferable splendor. He turned black. He turned dark. She returned in a twilight drizzle and offered a trust before he made the final offering of himself. She said, when the world has closed its eyes and as we become the one beast with two backs, you can lose your, you can lose your lights in me. She also whispered, for old time's sake, I will hallucinate your hallows, your holiness. Thank you. Thank you, Pratima. Next is Christy. Christy will be reading Miss Militancy. Hi. Good afternoon, all. I'm Christy. I'm from Kerala. I'm reading the poem Miss Militancy by Meena Kamsami. Miss Militancy. She thought she was dying. Ants crawled under her flaking skin. Migraines visited her at meal times. Her tender as tomato breasts bruised to touch. Her heart forgot its steady beat. Floundering at 40, she twisted safety pins into spirals, chewed on pencil ends, tore down calendars, became a hurricane about the house. That wetness with its lunar reek never came. Her monthly drip had disappeared. Her nominee man was back home by then, ditched and duped by his dancer mistress. She forgave that bitch, buried the bad blood between, gave him her anklet of rubies to sell and begin some business with. He went. A week later, she received his body bag with the executioner's seal on the toad tag. She stormed into the palace, flung her other anklet at the bloody throne. The royals too saw the red. The king died of shame. The queen died of shock. On the edge, Miss Militancy bade for more blood. Venting vengeance, she made a bomb of her left breast and blew up the blasted city. Long after that land had turned to ashes, the rest of her plucked breast bled. Watching that breast sprout back from its roots, the lone woman learned to outgrow her loss. When the scars no longer showed and the faraway sea could be smelled between her legs, she dissolved in a mist of after smoke. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Neelam? Yeah. Next is, ne Next is Neelam. She'll be reading Nail the Poem. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Neelam from Rajasthan. I'm re I will read the poem Nailed. Men are afraid of any woman who makes poetry and dangerous portents, unable to predict when, for what, and for whom she will open her mouth, unable to stitch up her lips. They silence her. Her pet parrot developed an atrocious fetish for the flesh of sacrificial gods. So Kulamai was bolted within a box and docked in the cavalry. She teased and tormented his celibacy. So Miss Success Willis was thrown into a well by a wandering socialite godman. 
she was inaccessible and untenable. So Durga was put in an iron trunk to settle on a riverbed. And even the men and women who tried to approach her were informed in a pre-recorded voice that she was out of these network lines and coverage area. She was an outcast who had all the marks of a fairy orator who summoned their own for parliament. So a nail was driven into her head on the instruction of her Brahmin fiancé and her coffin was set adrift in a welling river. She was black and bloodthirsty, so even Kali found herself shut inside her shine. They were all relatively low risk, so most of the women were locked up at home. Thank you, Neelam. Next is Kamal Silai. Good reading the Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to read Moon Gazers by Meena Kandasamy. 15, lost in a moon, lost in a room, full of children learning Hindi poetry for an approaching exam. In a nasal bass, the teacher speaks of some besotted bird that watches the moon every moment of the night. I stand up and ask, what does that bird do on new moon nights? Peeved by what she thinks is impudence. The teacher says, the teacher says the bird watches my face. The class turns all at once, stares at me. Ashamed, I shrink, I sit. 22, lost in any space, I restlessly seek the strength of his shoulders and I hunt like a hungry beast to catch a glimpse of my cold black lover and I crave to look once more into his limitless eyes where I sank and never surfaced. As I desolately count each passing hour, I become that moon-gazing bird on new moon nights. I sing the saddest songs of all time. I never ask questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, to follow us uh, kindly, uh, to, to join our group reading uh, club group, the link is given below. You can join us there and to follow us, keep watching us in YouTube. Uh, you can follow Wallet's test. Thank you.